You are listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with a global soul. Um, Our theme music is a clip of Summer Nights by the Eric Jones Trio. It's provided by our friend Mark Chesanow, who plays with the Eric Jones Trio every Thursday and Sunday at Good Times Jazz Bar downtown. Hello and welcome to Arts on the Air. This is the inaugural program by me, Tamara Garvey. And me, Melissa Taylor. (laughs) Thanks for joining us. Uh, We know that Rob Hessler did an amazing job with the show for five years, and we are super excited and honored to be taking over the helm. And a little daunted. It's big shoes to fill. Um, (laughs) Rob did a great job, so um, and we're just delighted to be here. Delighted to be here. Thanks for joining us. Um, Just to give you a little intro about ourselves, I'm Tamara, and I am a local artist, and I've lived in Savannah for five years this time, but previously I lived here for five years as well. And I'm Melissa Taylor. I am one of the co-owners of E. Shaver Booksellers, downtown Savannah. Um, I have lived in Savannah now for seven years. Uh, We came here for my husband to go to SCAD and uh, never left. Never left, no. (laughs) (laughs) So on the show today, we're going to be interviewing a young artist uh, named Adonis DeKing, um, who is starting his journey to making a career out of art. Very excited to talk to him. Yes, and then we'll also be talking at the end about some events uh, that you might want to check out in the community. Yes, thank you for joining us. Here we go. We have our first interviewee. It's Adonis DeKing. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Adonis didn't have much choice because he's one of the booksellers (laughs) at the bookstore, so, you know, it was a little hard for him to say no. To say congrats on keeping your job, then. Adonis, good (laughs) good decision to come for this interview. (laughs) No, Adonis was very gracious and and said yes immediately, so Um, that was nice. (laughs) And, I mean, the reason Melissa chose you, she has a great idea. Tell us about your conceptual idea for this first show. Okay, well, it's not that great of an idea, but... Tamara's building it way up. Um, I just thought, because this is our first show, and it's kind of us trying to do something new, um, that it would make sense to interview someone who is a new graduate and who is looking at making a career out of art and, and kind of talking about the process that goes into that and, you know how daunting that is yeah, too. Yeah. Um, you're yeah. launching your art career. We're launching this show. show. Yeah. And this is your, like your first interview that you've done, right? Yeah. Okay. Exciting. <laughs> our first as well. <laughs> We're all professionals. It's very exciting. <laughs> it's going great so far. Um, <laughs> well, Adana, so first we wanted to ask you about your name. It is very cool. It is an iconic name and you're of course destined to be famous with a name like Adonis. Do you know how you, how your parents came up with it? Um, yeah. So it was really all my mom. She wanted to keep the theme of having A's as our names, Mm -hmm. because my sister's name is Abigail, so she chose my name Adonis just from randomly in a baby book. Okay. Yeah. But you do have a a special middle name, right? Uh, So yeah, yeah, my middle name is Gilberts, which since my mom chose the first name, my dad got to choose the middle name, Uh and he names me after Gilbert Gottfried, his favorite (laughs) comedian. I love that. <laughs> I love that Gilbert Gottfried still has some some people really pulling for him. He's got yeah, you know yeah. I mean, c- come on, he's he's iconic. Okay, <laughs> See, the voice. Yeah. Come on, it's, <laughs> it's been a while. I can't I can't hear it and not think of Iago and Aladdin. Like he, <laughs> he's always going to be the my favorite cartoon parrot. <laughs> it's a good legacy, it's honest. Yeah. Um, so tell us. So how recently did you graduate? Um, just a few months ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what did you major in? I was animation. Animation. Okay. But your, your website is all uh, paintings and illustration. Yeah. So. Um, so, yeah, I sort of realized that I love painting more than animation. Um, sort of towards the end of my junior year, I sort of started just not liking animation that much. As I started getting into the further on classes, it felt more like doing it for the money instead of doing it for the art, mm-hmm. you know? Because every professor would talk about, here's where jobs are, here's how you can get more money out of the industry, doing all this stuff. But, you know, the reason I first started making art was just for the love of art Mm -hmm. and just for the passion of it. And I sort of found that passion in painting. Hmm. Well, that's a, um, I mean, that's an interesting point about um, not doing it as much for the money, but doing it for the passion of it. Like, how do you reconcile the two? Like, so how... um, how do you make a career out of it while keeping the passion, I think, is, is like, the big question. 
Well, all of my originals I give away for free. Um, I have been the recipient of a few of those, which I love. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But to make money out of it, I mean, I make stickers and I'm hoping to make prints of all my stuff and sell them. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I just feel like the originals, I would never want to sell any of my art for more than like $50. Yeah. Because I fear just doing it just for the money. Mm-hmm. And losing the passion for painting, just like I lost the passion for animation. Did you, so when you first went off to SCAD, were you immediately focused on animation? Or how, how did that come about? Um, yeah, I was sort of, I really thought I was going to love animation, even though I hadn't done much of it in high school. Mm-hmm. I'd only really done a few, like a few short scenes. And I was like, this is really cool. I'm going to love this. But mm-hmm. it sort of, it's when your hobby turns into your job sort of. Mm-hmm. You can't have too much of one thing because then it just spoils it. And that's sort of what happened with animation for me. Yeah. Did you think the program was going to be more fine arty and two-dimensional and less uh, digital work? Yeah. It definitely turned into a lot of the later classes just being all digital. Mm-hmm. And I sort of just stopped going in my sketchbook for yeah. like the last two years. And it was, it was very much where I felt a disconnect from art and yeah. yeah, that's why I turned to painting. Do you think that's a common, did you notice other students in your animation program feeling like that or are people very committed to it and love the digital art? Um, yeah, there's two sides. There's people who I think, well actually three sides. Okay. I think there's people who are faking it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they're faking loving it. There are people who are actually loving it, which yeah. I love for them that mm-hmm. they found their passion. Mm-hmm. And then there's others who I think are just there just to get a degree, mm-hmm. which I sort of was. I sort of just completed the animation just to get the degree, Yeah. Um, even though I lost the passion for it. I completely understand that. I completed an accounting degree just to have a degree because wow. I don't do any accounting. <laughs> I, you know what? I have a degree in biology as well before yeah. SCAD. Yeah, <laughs> so, so all of us. Yeah. No, we, we completely understand the finishing the degree to finish the degree. I mean, yeah. after you've put in that much work, I mean... It, it doesn't make sense not to finish. Right. I mean, you're proud you of it. You, you got that far into it. You yeah. might as well get the degree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you? Uh, how does your your family feel about you know that you got your degree in animation? Which, as far as the SCAD majors go, that one is very career based, and I would think that family would be very like, whew, oh, our kid is getting a degree in animation. How do they feel if you're transitioning into doing more fine more fine art? Yeah, they don't mind. Yeah. I mean, as long as I'm happy, they're happy for me. I love yeah. that. So, That's fantastic. Yeah, I love them for that. <laughs> Um, so you, you were saying that you didn't really, um, pay a lot of attention when you were taking like foundation classes to like painting techniques and that kind of stuff that you might've learned early on. Um, what was it about painting that drew you to it? And like, how did, how did you find a love of it? How did you come back to it? Um, by making presents for people, it was sort of my drive to make people happy that I found a love for something else Mm -hmm. because I made Christmas presents for everyone at the store as paintings and so I don't know I just loved the feeling of giving away my art Mm. and it just made me want to make more and more paintings and I think there was a point like three months ago where I just made a painting every single day sometimes two paintings every day and even though they weren't that great I was, like, teaching myself techniques, teaching how to control the brushes and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, it's important to learn how to finish a painting because sometimes you feel like you can keep chipping away at it forever and it's hard to bring it to a close. Mm -hmm. So it's really good practice to start churning out these little ones and be done. Um, So has it been the cats at E-Shaver? Is that what you started out painting when you did these gifts? Um, It was actually... um, one of my coworkers' dogs, um, okay. Caitlin, mm-hmm. I made her one because she mentioned that she was going to get me Christmas presents. Um, she was going to get me cookies. So I was like, oh, no, I got to get her something. <laughs> and so, yeah, I got a sneaky photo of her dog from Annie. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, no, Annie's going to feel bad now that she knows I gave a painting to Caitlin. <laughs> so I was like, all right, Caitlin, do you have a photo of Annie's dog? And then... Yeah, it just turned into me making a painting for everyone, and I loved it. Yeah, it was very sweet. Like, And you did a great job of, like, kind of picking the thing that the recipient kind of 
love the most. Like for some of them, mm-hmm. it wasn't people's animals. It was uh, it was something that they really enjoyed. And you just have oh, a that's very cool. you have a knack for uh, for understanding what's going to make people happy. It's very sweet. It's <laughs> really serious on this. Um, I did want to ask you. I was looking at your website and I saw that you paint in uh, gouache and acrylic and oil. Can you tell us how you decide on each painting? which materials to do, or do you feel like you're still just experimenting with everything and getting used to it? Well, sometimes it's just which material I've bought most recently okay. and I'm <laughs> most excited to use. <laughs> but a lot of the time it's based on... Well, I don't want to get too far into the technicals, but it's like the face shape of the animal, mm. the color of the fur, um, how much the color is changing. Sometimes I'll go to gouache if there's a lot of change. If there's blocks of color, I'll do oil. Okay. Um, and if there's a lot of shadows, I'll sometimes do acrylic. Mm-hmm. But Feel yeah. free to get technical. <laughs> yeah, you this go This is as... a radio station for artists and art lovers. Yeah, so, so go as technical as you want. We'll, we will carry Good on. Good deep. You can talk <laughs> yeah. about Payne's gray, cadmium red. Get in there. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just based on what I think the person will like the most. Okay. And, you know, some people I've given multiple ones. I've given, I know I've most I've given you oil and gouache. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And I've loved both of them. <laughs> the whole gallery. Okay. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, is there one that you personally prefer working in? Like, is there one medium that you really, like, that's your go-to? I love painting in oil. Mm-hmm. But I love how gouache looks yeah (laughs) i know there's some gouache pieces out there that i just can't do (laughs) and that's why i love the medium so much because i know there's so much for me to still learn how to do Mm -hmm. so maybe in like 10 years i will eventually love gouache more Mm -hmm. but i just love oil yeah i was with the techniques i was gonna say the the one thing that i have seen through your work is that when there is something that you want to learn or a technique that you want to um, perfect that you just, you just work at it and you practice. And, and, and like, I've seen it in your work, like where you just sit down and you're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to do this. And you, you do. And I, I admire the work ethic so much. Yeah. That's amazing. Especially considering that you got your entire degree in something and now you're trying to launch a whole different thing. So yeah, it's actually yeah. very impressive. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, something you don't see in the paintings is a lot of the ones I give away have been painted over a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're getting like a self-portrait of me, but it's covered (laughs) by your animal. Well, so later, later on in life, like when you're super, super famous, they'll do like x-rays of the, of the stuff and they'll find the work underneath. This is very old masters. (laughs) Yeah, very much. (laughs) It's like a recently discovered Van Gogh. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's like I'll have like eight paintings all covered by this one painting. <laughs> that's finally like okay, all those yeah. other ones were just practice before I could finally <laughs> get to this very good one that I like. Well, then, uh, so we touched on it a little bit earlier. Like Tamara said, you know about chipping away at things and keep keeping up. Like, how do you know when you're finished? How do you know when something has meet, meets your seal of approval when you're ready for the world to see it? <laughs> Sometimes it's when I think it's worthy of, like, sending a photo to my family. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, hey, check out this piece of art. <laughs> if it doesn't look good in a photo, I don't think it really... Well, I mean, real life looks much better than in photos. Mm-hmm. But if it looks very bad in a the photo, then I'll be like, no way I can put this anywhere. <laughs> so, I can't even text this to them. <laughs> yeah. So it's really if I disconnect myself from the arts... And I look at it from someone else's point of view, like from my family's point of view. Mm -hmm. And I critique it as hard as I can. And then I say, all right, this is good enough. Or, oh, maybe he should have spent a few more hours on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I found I was at work last night and um, a prospective SCAD student was asking me what was my favorite thing about school. And I didn't even think. It just came out. And I said... I really, now I really appreciate how difficult the critiques were and how rigorous they were. And sometimes I left, sometimes you'd be like emotionally devastated and you'd go home and you'd have to just like gather yourself and be like, all right, I really need to turn this around. But it was very rigorous. And that's, I mean, the only way that you're really going to get good at it. And then they're preparing you to be able to, you're going to graduate and then you'll be off on your own. You're going to have to be able to look at it and be that rigorous as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I felt the critiques, it was definitely... A lot of people were saying critiques 
just for the grade because it was part of our grades participate mm-hmm. in oh, critique. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, there were a lot of people who actually like who actually cared about making the art the best it could be. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I love all those people for that. And I always tried to give my best critiques, but you know, with animation, I really didn't know much because I I just lost my passion for it. Yeah. Yeah, well, or my husband is a professor. Um, that's one of the things he and I talk about a lot is, it, like, he gets frustrated because he'll have students that don't want to show their work for critique or, like, that, you know, you ju- he just has some students that won't say anything during critique or that won't take a critique. Like, And I feel like wow. if you're going to art school, like, I, I just don't understand, one, the not wanting to show your work because, I mean, you know, Ideally, if you want to make a living out of art, right, you're going to have to show yeah, someone your work. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just like, a, you know, not being, I, I, and I know it's hard to to step back from it and not take it personally, but, um, you know, just not being able to take, I, I would hope, constructive criticism. Like, I would think in most cases it's it's intended as constructive, it right? Is, it is intended as constructive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least from the professors. Yeah. I don't know how the other students are in critique, but how did you? And so, in animation, do you work in uh, in groups very much, or how are you like all a bunch of people contributing to one thing, and then you're all throwing your work up to be critiqued? Um. Yeah. So it's especially in, in our senior film, we were in a group of eight, okay. and we would do these slideshows where each person would show what they've done, and then we would sort of play the whole film together. And it was very nice because everyone got their own personalized critiques on their stuff, but it did get repetitive Mm -hmm. when, like, because we'd have, like, four people working on one shot, Mm -hmm. and we'd say, like, only pay attention to the lighting on this, don't pay attention to the drawing, that'll come later. Yeah, I bet it's it's hard to uh, just look at the one part of it. Yeah, and separate that out. That having seen your senior film, it made me weep like a little girl. Really? Oh yes, it was so sweet. <laughs> I am so I'm very curious about um, like whether there's principles of what you're doing in your animation degree that you do feel like are applicable in your paintings. Like just even though you're working digitally, but it, was there a style of art, like a style that you feel like your art was that is carrying over into the paintings? Um. Yeah, definitely. I you know that store bookmark I made for St. Patrick's Day? Yeah. The layouts, um, actually the whole style of it was sort of similar to our film mm-hmm. because I was a layout artist for, the, for that one. And so I basically just used the same brushes and I, I don't know, that bookmark, I think it really made me just start loving pet portraits mm-hmm. and stuff like that because I had to make the pets for them. Yeah. And... Yeah, it got me off of making environments and actually making pets. Oh, the foreground part of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I love that that bookmark was the first piece of art you ever sold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All of your firsts are in this store. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exciting. I love that. <laughs> and the, and the, the bookmark, it was the four cats kind of cavorting in greenery, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it was the St. Patrick's Day seasonal bookmark, which... We'll make up an appearance back around St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, it was smart to do something <laughs> for St. Patrick's Day. It does, I mean, the look of it, now that I think of it, it does have a real kind of cinematic quality to it, or it looks like a, it does look like a still from an animated film, which is cool. Yeah. I, I never really thought of it. I mean, I honestly, I really did not know that you had majored in animation. I just assumed you had majored in illustration, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of my work I show is just the illustration and the painting. Mm-hmm. I don't really show much of my animation just because... I really didn't do much in my classes for animation wise. Hmm. Um, It was really just layouts and they were very basic ones because you know, they're for animation. It's all stuff that looks like it could have been done in like 10 minutes, Hmm. which is why I love painting so much because you can tell how much work someone put into it Mm -hmm. because of how many brushstrokes, how much the lighting and the shadows and all that stuff. It's, it's really amazing just to look at an art piece, especially a big one and just be like, Okay, they spent so much time on that. Yeah. And it just looks amazing. Yeah, you can really appreciate. Well, so so since animation is a collaborative discipline, like where you weren't working by yourself, do you miss collaborating with other people? Or, or do you like working individually on, on your pieces? I've sort of started love 
loving working individually. Mm-hmm. I think it's just because I'm an introvert and I don't like talking to people that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for doing this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think in like groups, especially in a group of eight, mm-hmm. I didn't really feel like I was contributing much to conversations, mm. which is why, I don't know, I love painting. If I were to ever do like a group painting, I don't think I could ever do that. <laughs> yeah. But I could do like a group film with animation. Yeah. But... Yeah, I think it's just artists are introverted in nature. We just prefer working alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why I can go for like 10 hours working on a painting. But mm-hmm. I would not be able to sit in a room 10 hours with someone animating. That's fair. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. I think that's an interesting aspect. In, in my work, I, I used to do a lot more, a lot more craft shows where you're just sitting behind a table and talking to people all day long and giving your spiel and selling. And I was like, I mean, it's so fascinating to think of people who... Like, your real personality is to sit alone and work on things and toil and, like, come up with it all on your own. And then you have this completely opposite thing where in order to make money, you have to go out and talk to people all day long. And it's it's hard. It's really, like, pushing against your... You know, it's not... It's usually not... The same person is not usually very good at both of those things. Um, so you... Okay, so... So <laughs> circle it back. <laughs> um, you are talking about pet portraits and... Um, like the the bookmark got you into doing like pet portraiture. Um, you also do do human portraiture as well, and actually quite well. Um, and so, what what do you prefer? Do you prefer pets over people, or people over pets? I prefer pets definitely. <laughs> um, this is gonna sound very mean to people, oh, but okay. <laughs> I think you know every pet deserves to have a portrait. I don't think every person does. Um, I, you know what? I would agree with that 100%. Strong statement. Because, yeah. you know, I've stayed up all night sometimes working on a painting, if it's for a pet, because mm-hmm. I'm like, this pet is going to love seeing themselves. Even, even if they can't comprehend that the painting's of them, this, it's in spirit, you know? They'll love sniffing it, at least. Yeah. yeah. And I just... I would not be able to work on, like, a human portrait for more than five hours. Mm. It may just be because I don't like looking at people or, like, (laughs) staring at them. But I don't know. I just love... I don't know. I think every pet deserves to have a nice painting of them. Well, they're so pure, as opposed to humans who can oftentimes (laughs) not be. Like, animals are just, you know... They are. They're just... They're they're pure. I noticed I was looking through all your various pet portraits, and um, there were... Like, I feel like with, with animals, to really capture their spirit, it's about, like, their eyes and ears and the tilt of their head. And there's one particular one of two hounds or two basset hounds, something like that, where they... It was such a perfect... I have a dog and I have a hound dog. And he has this... Per, you capture this perfectly, where it's like his head is tipped down and then he's looking up. And it's such a sad, like, hang dog, sad, you know, hound look that it was just so perfect how you captured it. And I wanted to tell you that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that one... Yeah. Yeah, that one it was actually my first commission. That was for an old coworker of mine. She wanted her two dogs, ZD and Praline. Mm. And Cute. I based the background of that one off the unicorn tapestries, which I just love all the flowers and all the little details in the backgrounds. And I thought if I can mix if I can make backgrounds look as detailed as the figures, then I think this is gonna make it look really nice. And it did come out with it. I think it yeah. came out very nice. Is that one of your favorites, do you feel like? It is. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, that was the one thing, because um, Adonis was awesome and did um, a portrait of each of my dogs, and I think the reason they were so successful is because you captured, like, you somehow looking at a photo of them, you were able to capture their personality in a way that uh, is just beautiful I mean it's like that like you were saying like the kind of like the tilt of the head and like the look in the eyes like you really do get that with animals and it's not an easy thing to do yeah I'm looking right now on the wall there's um we're in the wall of the East Shaver office and we have a little collection of Adonis's where it's these four (laughs) square paintings of the four cats here and they are so different one of them has really crazy eyes which is is true, <laughs> true, true to life. Yeah. Uh, Skimble Shanks has completely <laughs> crazy wild. eyes. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite cat here has always been Elliot, who is basically clinically depressed. <laughs> and you did capture that aspect of him in the painting. <laughs> clinically depressed slash majestic. <laughs> <laughs> where, where did you move here from? Um, I'm from Boston. From Boston, okay. How did uh, the experience of being in Savannah match up to what you were imagining before you came? 
Um, well, I was imagining Savannah to be much more fast-paced like Boston. Okay. Um, but it definitely wasn't. <laughs> no, it is definitely not fast-paced. <laughs> um, which was actually kind of better for me because I don't think I can handle very big cities. Mm. I love just having a calm, peaceful afternoon, you know, yeah. without cars that are just speeding and honking. Just horse-drawn carriages. Stuff. Yes, yeah. and, and trolley buses. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love, so that's interesting you came here from Boston. When I was looking to go to art school, the two places that I was applying to were Savannah and Boston. And I still feel like they, they have such a similar, like, like the Americana of it and the, histor- and the history of it and the architecture. And it just was sort of like a decision of whether you want super, super hot or super cold. <laughs> you know, two sides of the same coin. Did you come in tour scab before you decided to come here or did you just apply? I just applied. Okay. Um, yeah, in high school, I was not very smart. Um, I mean, I mean, I was not very smart college applying wise. Yeah, gotcha. I only applied to two schools, mm-hmm. and yeah, I just chose SCAD. Did your high school have a good arts program? Did you um, did you take a lot of art classes in high school? I wish I did. Yeah, we only had to take two art classes for the entire four years. Oh wow! And we were required to take two years of like foreign language. Okay. So those two years took up our elective, Mm -hmm. and then those other two years I took art. But it was, of course, freshman and sophomore year when I wasn't really into art. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really get much out of it. Okay. But I really wish I did. Yeah. I wanted to switch gears a little bit, and um, you you mentioned that you're starting to get into making prints and making products for stores. How is that? How's your experience with that going so far? Do you have any any issues you're running into? Um, It's very intimidating. Mm -hmm trying to just figure out financial stuff and all that. Um, I still don't understand taxes. Oh. Or, <laughs> yeah. And no one ever understands taxes. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> and that's coming from someone with an accounting degree who, you know, wow. yeah. um, you know, studied to do that. No, no one understands taxes. <laughs> that should make you feel better if you said that. I mean, I owe some amount of money in taxes that I'll figure out sometime, but... Yeah. We can cut this part out of the interview so that the IRS doesn't come after you. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> How is it? Um, I know that we spoke a little while ago about you starting to get prints and cards made. Are you um, delving into that? What are you thinking? Um, yeah, so far I just started with stickers. Okay. But I'm looking to get prints of some of my much bigger pieces yeah. so that I can get them printed much larger and you can see all the detail. Mm-hmm. Just because with my large, like... 24 by 18 canvases, if they get put into a 3-inch sticker, they're not going to look that great. Yeah, that's true. Um, So yeah, I'm looking to get prints, maybe large-scale ones, but for now, maybe just greeting cards, stuff like that. I think it's a nice direction to go in. I can say, as somebody who's been selling prints and cards, I mean, cards are like... I mean, everybody, you know, does emailing and everything is electronic and fast, 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 but cards are just never going to die. It is always nice to get something in the mail that's not a bill. It's always nice to send somebody something with your handwriting on it. I mean, people are buying cards like crazy. Um, so. We are selling your cards like oh. crazy. Like, we, we sell Tamara's <laughs> cards at the shop, and um, it is a... It's a constant need to restock. Like, we sell a ton of oh Tamara's cards. thank you. I wasn't even fishing for that. No, no, I know, you, I know you much. weren't, but I'm just saying, like, um, <laughs> like, really, seriously, cards are huge business at the shop, yeah. um, especially because... The stationery store that was downtown has gone out of yes, business. Yes, that is very sad. They were open for years. Yeah, and there's just not a huge... There, there's a void now yeah. I'm, I'm getting that stuff downtown, and so... We, I think that's a little-known thing, that book bookshops are really, really good for uh, paper products in general, like what you're going into, cards and stickers and little... I, and, the, you know, if you get um, little notepads made, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, True. you know, seeing something physical is so much better than digital. Yeah. Which is why... Yeah, I mean, all my presents I give physically. I never send, like, a digital text message or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I'll mail someone a birthday <laughs> card. Yeah, I like love that. that. Well, okay, we're going to take a short break right now, and when we come back, we will have more of Adonis to King. Stay tuned. You are listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with a global soul. Trees are one of Chatham County's most treasured natural resources. 
Beyond their beauty and cultural significance, the impact of trees are far-reaching and compounding, spanning from economic benefits to health improvements to climate change resilience. Trees are woven into every aspect of our lives. Savannah Tree Foundation protects and grows Chatham County's urban forest through tree planting, community engagement, and advocacy. More information is available at savannatree.org. This portion of WRUU's programming is brought to you by listeners and by Brighter Day Natural Foods. Brighter Day Natural Foods has been serving Savannah's healthy food and supplement needs since 1978. It is located at the corner of Bull Street and Park Avenue. They have online ordering and curbside delivery available. And now a walk-up window for smoothies, juices, and sandwiches from the deli. They are open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday. More information can be found at brighterdayfoods.com. What does it mean when we say that WRUU is a community radio station? It doesn't just mean that we invite the community to create programming. And it doesn't just mean that we're a voice for the community. It also means that we're counting on the community to keep us going. And you are the community. Almost all of our modest budget comes from small annual or monthly donations from listeners like you. You get to enjoy our community-focused programming because many others have stepped forward to do their part. Now do your part by joining our community of listener donors. Go to WRUU.org right now and make a one-time or monthly donation. And thank you for supporting Savannah's community radio station, 107.5 FM. Well, we are back uh, continuing our interview with Adonis de King. Um, when we left off, we were kind of talking about um, you starting to make prints and stickers of your of your um, of your work. Um, so part of the process of making a living from uh, from art is getting those products into shops and making their way to people so like what how have you found that process like I, I mean I imagine it's kind of daunting cold calling people right <laughs> yeah um well a lot of the money I've made from art has just been word of mouth okay that's nice <laughs> yeah I well, because I mentioned earlier that I give, like, presents, mm-hmm. my art as presents to people. Yeah. And a lot of times, I'll just get a random message from someone like, hey, I'm a friend of this person, mm-hmm. and I saw this on their wall, or I saw this. Could you make one for my pet? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it's been word of mouth, but talking to complete strangers about my art and being like, hey, this is me, this is my entire thing right here yeah. it's very intimidating yeah i would imagine so <laughs> how do you so you mentioned before that you you mostly like to do paintings and give them away as gifts so when somebody contacts you and they do want to commission a pet portrait how have you found it, it's been for you uh giving them a price how do you come up with that um well it really depends on the size and what medium they want if they want oil gouache or acrylic mm. i'll charge more for oil just mm-hmm. because it's more expensive for materials. Yeah. But sometimes if I think that I'm going to really enjoy making something, I'll sort of just undercharge just because I really want to do it just to make the art piece instead of doing it just for the money. Mm. So I'm like, I don't want them to cancel the commission. I don't want them to uh, run yeah. away. I'm yeah. going to be like, I'll, I'll charge you like $50 for something like this, even though it's it's taking me like 10 hours to do it. Mm. Well, I imagine one of the hard things too is that somebody that doesn't, that's just commissioning a piece and has no idea what's going into it really doesn't know what they should be paying for it either, right? Like, do you, I'm, I'm sure you find that yeah, with, yeah. with pricing paintings and people not understanding exactly the amount of work that goes into it. I will it. say, and for you, and you're in an interesting place right now because you're like, You've graduated with a degree, but you're starting something else. So you're right now building up your website and your portfolio with these, you know, like you're trying to, you're pricing things sort of low to have a lot of art pieces on your site for people to look at and see your, your work. And, uh, like ordinarily it's like you would have kind of gotten to the stage, maybe senior year of school. So you're still, you're like having a lot of work to do right now. Um, I will say for me personally, when I first got out of SCAD, I mean, starting an Etsy shop was the main thing that I started right away, it's so much easier than having your own website. And even now, years later, I have my own site with a shop on it, but Etsy for sure, because there are just constantly millions of people trolling for Etsy, looking for things to buy. And then the other thing 
that that will help you is that, um, so you have a listing on your Etsy shop and you'll have your photos of pet portraits you've done and you can have different options of sizes and prices and you'll have a whole description in there where you write out everything that goes into it. And then when people approach you in the future about a pet portrait, you can send them a link to that and they can read it and look at it and see the different size options and make their choices and see all the things you've done before. And that I feel like just having this sort of professional thing to show them that I feel like is also going to make you feel more legitimate and like you can charge more for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, that's, I, um, I have friends who are, um, in the culinary industry and, you know, people will ask them to make wedding cakes and they'll be like, can you make a wedding cake for me? It's not going to be that big. It's a, a wedding for like 300 people. Can Whoa. you do something for like $150? Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is so unrealistic. Yeah, yeah. That's like, I think people, when people have photographer friends and they say, for your gift, can you do um, the wedding photography for us? And you might, you, you know, you might be thinking, well, I wasn't going to be giving you a gift worth $2,000. But, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. totally. <laughs> yeah, so um, so have you, so you have been doing the word of mouth thing, but have you approached, I know you've approached shavers about selling your yes. stuff, but have you approached any other shops and how, how has that gone? <laughs> um, I've been sending emails. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's, it's sort of just like job hunting where it's a lot of no responses, yeah. mm-hmm. a few no's. And then maybe a few yeses mixed in. If it makes you feel better, I have the exact same thing. <laughs> Nobody ever replies. <laughs> I do. I love that you uh, that you're working for Shaver, which is like like we mentioned, one of the biggest sellers of uh, paper products and stationery in town. So you really you pulled like a long con working for them. <laughs> yes, that, that, yes, yeah. I would call Adonis's employment a long con. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, we're actually very sad because Adonis will be leaving us soon. Um, uh, yeah, tell us, tell us about. Yeah, your plan. so what's what's the plan? Yeah, so <laughs> I will be moving back to Boston. Wow. So I can move in with my parents and save some money on rents. Hey, a time honored <laughs> yeah, college yeah, tuition. T- <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah, I think once I get the majority of student loans paid off, mm-hmm. then I really want to move back to Savannah. Adonis, that's going to be like fifty years from now. <laughs> I know. Well, Savannah's great for retirement. <laughs> you so you really do like it here? Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's I'm saying very different from where you're from. Yeah. Are you prepared for the winters? I think so. <clears throat> okay. Um, I've sort of gotten rid of all my winter clothing. Though, yeah. Yeah. From right. living here for four years. I was always so proud of the fact that I was from the north, and you know, I was like, "Oh, it's so hot down here." And now, when I go to Pittsburgh in the winter, I'm like, "Oh my god, it's freezing!" Like I feel like the mighty have fallen. So prepare yourself. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> the blood thins out quickly. <laughs> What are you going to do when you get back home? Are you going to be, like, full-time focusing on your art? Will you have to get a day job? I really want to be full-time focused, mm. which is why I'm trying right now to contact a lot of places to get my art in there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we'll see how it goes how the next, like, five months or six months That's go. That's how long you have? Okay. Yeah. Were you, were you born and raised in Boston? I was. Okay. Yeah. So at least if you have to hit the pavement and walk around and go to shops, you can now... Uh, you have some knowledge of the area. Yeah, of the city. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. walking back and forth across the whole city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Many, many miles. <laughs> well, um, would you be open? I And this is an idea that I came up with. I haven't even told Tamara about this, but like, I think it would be fun to check in with you in about six months and kind of see where the journey oh, is and cool. like where like how things are going are you open to a, a six month check in yeah. <laughs> right. is this six months after he goes to Boston yeah six, he's gone yeah, five yeah. Months? okay yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna be so almost a year from now mm-hmm. yeah. we're interviewing you again yeah, yeah. I think get ready fun. yeah it would be a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> amazing um are you going to do you want to just focus on pet portraits going forward or what are you thinking uh, different kinds of art that you make into prints and cards yeah, I think just pet portraits for now. Okay. Until I've done every single medium I can possibly think of. <laughs> <laughs> Do you go to Starlandia much to get the secondhand art supplies? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. It's it's kind of far for me though. Okay. Because um, I just have my skateboard. Oh god. Um, yeah, you'll see it on a skateboard. Oh, very Marty McFly of you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do get a lot of supplies from there. Yeah, that place is. I mean, what. 
not to delve too far, but what a cool idea to have a like a secondhand art supply store in an art school town. I love it. I can't yeah. believe it's not a thing that everybody has. Well, especially when you've got like the foundation classes that you have to take yes. and like where oh you've God. got people who are not, you know, necessarily oh. um like visual artists or like people like yes. that people who are not going to use that not paint use again. ever again. We yeah. had to buy pastels, which is so expensive, and then you use it just for that one class, and it's like chalk pastels. And then the, we had to buy a lot of gouache, which I guess maybe you can go by there and scoop up all the gouache that people are <laughs> unloading after foundation class. Yes, especially on move out day, they oh. have like little donation bins for all your art supplies, and yeah. they just fill up so fast because people just don't want to bring art supplies home yeah. that they're not going to use. Now, okay, here's the thing I've always heard about, but I've never actually, like, hit the streets to find to find out if this is true. Is it true that on move-out days for SCAD, if you go to the dorms, there are people throwing away, like, computers and electronics and full-size, like, people who are international, maybe, and this, getting out of plane to go home? This like, a weird uh, urban <laughs> legend. <laughs> like, I, like, and the, like, the third floor of this dorm is haunted by a ghost. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> um... <laughs> Maybe there's electronics, but other right? people have gone to them first. Okay. But, there, are, there are a lot of international students here who are flying home and can't take their full-size towers home, right? Yeah. Um, I know some departments do, like, swap meet sort of things. Yeah. Like, the sequential department does a sequential swap meet. So it's like you bring, you get a table and it's almost like a giant flea market. Wow. So, like, students who are in their earlier years that are going to be in Savannah for a while can benefit from the... Uh, People who are graduating, oh, getting rid of cool. all of their stuff. Yeah. 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 Are you still in touch with many of the people that you graduated with? Um, a few. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think since it's been a few months, everyone is sort of just trying to get situated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be, like, maybe in the next two months, everyone will sort of get back together and start, you know, messaging again. Have people moved away, or are they... Um, now, because of COVID, is, is animation still a thing that, like, you could live anywhere and just work from home and do? I think so. Mm-hmm. My roommate, he's also animation. He's doing a remote internship okay. um, for a company in L.A. That's and, cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very much, you don't have to be in person for it. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot of animation jobs are remote now. Mm-hmm. That's interesting, especially if it's uh, working in a group. Even so, with that, you could still just be remote? Yeah. That's cool, huh? I think it's just because everyone just doesn't like long meetings, and they don't <laughs> uh, like, yeah. especially introverted animation students. Yeah, like this, this is kind of like a long meeting. Yes, well, <laughs> one of the things we always joked about, like, with the store is, like, we don't normally hire animation students because they're usually so busy. It's oh. like animation students <gasps> never see the light of day, like, because yeah. they're always working. Um, so yeah. what was it about Adonis that made you? Oh, uh, because he was just like the nicest human in his oh interview. God. Like wow. we, like you left, and we were both Jessica and myself were both like, oh my god, what a sweet human! Wow. <laughs> You're breaking your, your own rule. I, I know. It. I was like, did you notice? <laughs> um, no, I thought I was just like very quiet, and I thought I just wasn't <laughs> saying enough. So I was like, oh, no, no, you were totally fine. Uh, no, we always like that's the one thing we talk about is like you're just like the most pleasant nugget of human and, and <laughs> you're gonna leave a, a giant void because the rest of us are bitter yeah. <laughs> maybe when you're uh when you're going around to you know hawk your wares to various shops you should go in person and not emails because you're a lovely personality That's yeah if you, help, you right? ever need a, a reference for anything you're i, I got you <laughs> Um, let's see. One thing I did want to ask you, um, I know just from personal experience that you are into puzzles and D and D. Are there uh, any favorite spots around Savannah that you can recommend for um, people with your interests? Yeah. Well, actually, for artists listening, Planet Fun they buy arts. Oh, um, okay. So yeah, I've I sold a few stickers there. Okay. But I saw most of them here at the store. Mm. But they also <laughs> buy like art prints and stuff like that. They have oh. a whole wall next to the door that's just filled with it. So if you're, like, a new artist trying to just get into the process of selling art, yeah. definitely go to Planet Fun. So they, they buy them outright? They don't do it consignment? Yep. Oh, you can just amazing. sell, like, one art piece. Yeah, yeah. Is it always, is it things that are sort of, like, nerd culture? Or are the, the subjects of the art anything? Um, mostly from what I've seen, yeah. But I've sold a lot of just pet portrait stickers okay. there, and they've taken them. Mm-hmm. So That is a very good tip. I didn't know that, Adonis. Yeah, yeah, very cool. There are so many sort of uh, like video game themed and like D and D nerdy stores around town. It's kind of amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
No, they know their market. <laughs> like Nerdheim just recently opened up this year. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. I've bought in a lot of, a lot of D&D miniatures. <laughs> you know what's crazy? I've lived here for years, and I only, within the last year or two, for the first time, went into that one that's on Broughton Street on the east side where they have that huge Pikachu in the window. Do you know what I mean? It's near the SCAD library. Oh, is that, oh, isn't that not, plain that's fun? Is that, yeah, okay, yeah. All right. yeah. All right, well, that, I only went in that the first time recently, and I was shocked at just how big it was. I didn't realize it went back so far. That was that one of the first places that Tim and I went into when we moved to town, because we were like, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because they had, like, you know, original Nintendo games and stuff that yeah. you could buy. Like, I mean, yeah, it's totally cat yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, they had a lot of uh, kind of analog things, like old board games, they yeah. had old dolls, old Barbies, yeah. and, like Hot Wheels, things like that. It was, kind of, it was amazing. Mm-hmm. And I'm yeah, pretty sure movies. the owner is a SCAD graduate as well. Oh, okay. Good yeah. for them for, I mean, surviving in this enormous space on yeah. Broad Street. Well, they, I mean, they do what they do very well. Like, they know their audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you been to, there's a newish store called Locally Made that's on West Broughton Street. Have you been in there? I have not yet. Okay. Well, I would go in there and check it out. They are across the street from H&M. Um, and the funny thing, this is, it's so weird to think about for Savannah where it's such a city of makers, but I, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the only store on Broughton Street and maybe downtown where just literally everything in there is handmade by a local person. And I um, think some of your stuff is in there too, right? Some of my stuff is in there. Yes. Thank you for noticing that. <laughs> But, <laughs> I, was, I was perusing your website. I would I would recommend you stop in there and look at their items and then maybe um, you know reach out to them. Usually, I, I, I feel like the what we usually recommend to people for pitching or things is to email. I know I told you a minute ago to go in in person, but a lot of times the people working in a store are not necessarily the ones making the buying decisions. Yeah. So I would go in there and take a look and see what kinds of things they have and the pricing and then maybe reach out to them because they are very busy in there. They're doing great. It's amazing. So... There's a little shout out to Locally Made. Um, in talking about your, your plan is to get back to Boston, what is the thing that you're going to miss most about Savannah? Oh, yeah. I mean, not the humidity, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not that. But I'm going to miss just how close everything is and just how I can just go outside and just see something new and mm-hmm. just walk into a store that I like and just how walkable everything is downtown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's definitely something where I'm from, you have to have a car. Yeah. Oh. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm going to miss just how beautiful it is, too. Yeah, that, I always wonder if the people that are from Savannah take for granted how uniquely beautiful Savannah is. Like, it's one of those things that I, you know, I've lived here for seven years now, mm-hmm. um, that even so, like, just driving down certain streets, I'm still struck at like how beautiful yeah. Savannah is and it's just unlike other places. I, I love um when you come in off the highway and you you know exit onto thirty seventh street. That's what I do to go to my house. And you just exit off and you're immediately on this like oak tree lined vast boulevard with the Victorian houses on either side. It's just like the perfect just entry off a it's amazing. You're right in there. Adonis, do you have any questions for me about selling your art or getting things made or anything like that? Well I sort of I sort of want to know your story. Like, what got you into art? Oh, um, well, like I said, I have a degree in biology, and I kind of had almost the same thing as you, where I was getting toward the end of the degree and not feeling like I was going to be going into it. But I was so close to the end, and so I wanted to finish. Um, in senior year, I, I just I realized that I was getting into art, and I just started taking a bunch of electives of art. And then I, you know, I graduated, and I worked, and um, it was the economy was really bad, so I was just sort of limping along and having these jobs that were just these sort of generic, like, office jobs. And then eventually I just realized I wanted to make a big change, so I applied to SCAD, and I moved to SCAD. I was living in D.C. at the time. So basically ever since getting out of SCAD, it's, um, for, I mean, it was quite a number of years before I was able to do my art full-time. I graduated from SCAD in 2008, and then I always had a full-time job and was doing my art on the side and kind of slowly chipping away at it. And then in 2013, actually, was the last time that I had a full-time job. So I guess it's been nine years now since I've had a full-time job, which I know is super, super fortunate. So for the last nine years, I've um, sometimes I'm in a phase where I'm just doing art full-time. A lot of times I have a part-time job to support myself, which is nice to get you out of the house a little bit. But yeah, it's been... Um, so yeah, it took five years after graduating from SCAD to really be supporting myself with it. So just to give you some... 
<laughs> Some people are very instant. It's kind of incredible to me. I felt like I really had to like chip like gnaw away at it. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like if you're if you are constantly working at it and you I mean just you'll get there. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I mean, eventually. Yeah, I just say it may take a little bit of time, but I think like just chipping away at it. I I I mean I think you're great at working consistently and creating a body of work and just keeping yourself busy in your practice. So I think that's... Yeah, I mean, the fact that your website made me think that you had majored in illustration and you've only just done all of those pieces since graduating is, I mean, that's a, really a testament. Mm -hmm. You've been I mean, busy. Yeah, for me, art really doesn't feel like work. It just feels like, I don't know, it feels like a hobby. It feels like I'm doing it just for fun. Yeah. But really, I'm doing it for business <laughs> yeah. for so I can support myself full time. Well, you know, when you start making real money at it, it'll, the feeling, I mean, it'll just be a whole new dimension to it of how proud you are of it. Yeah. yeah. You know? Did you have, like, a moment where you knew that you were an artist? Like, no. before you went full time? <laughs> no. Do you feel like that? <laughs> I still <don't. laughs> I, a lot of times, I mean, when I was doing my degree at SCAD, a lot of times I felt very impostery just because I had gotten this like very academic degree beforehand and I hadn't been doing art my whole life and I felt like most of the students here were like new from the beginning they were doing it so I always felt like I was coming in late and I was running to catch up and frequently the professors would say things like you know if you're a true artist you're sketching all the time and you're always keeping a sketchbook and you should be drawing every day and I wasn't like that then and I'm still not like that and they, they would say statements like that that would get into my brain and then make me feel even more of an outsider so, I mean, I guess some good advice that I would give to people in general is just you have to, like, even though they're professors and they have decades of experience, everybody, like, that's just one opinion. That's just their opinion of what a true artist is, and it, it's, you, you can't uh, let things like that derail you from your path. It's not, like, one and done. Well, it's one, of those, it's one of those things that there's not one right way to make art. Right. I mean, like, that's the beauty of art is that everyone comes at it from a different perspective. There's no right way to to make a painting and I mean there's no right way to go about writing a book some people are very regimented and write from certain times to certain times and some yeah. people write when the moment happens and some people sit down and just crank something out and it's just yeah it's different for everyone it's a creative field so yeah. it stands to reason I mean and I like I did illustration and so the whole point of that is to by the end have like a very cohesive portfolio where somebody can hire you and they know what they're going to get and I I mean I haven't really pursued like much of a um, illustration career. My I've been more fine art where I just paint whatever I want and then sell it. But when you if you looked at my whole body of work, there's a lot of differences, and I have a lot of different subjects that I like to paint. But I always think like you're not going to get into being an art being an artist because you like to follow rules and you have to be you know like that goes against the entire thing of it. So you kind of it's interesting, like you said, where you uh, you have to know the rules and then you can be able to break them a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well, Adonis, this has been amazing talking to you. We have a couple of, we wanted to finish up by asking you, Melissa and I are going to start a thing where everybody we interview, we're going to ask them a couple of little random questions. This is our, our like, inside of the actor's studio moment. Yes, exactly. Yeah? <laughs> Would you like to start off, Melissa? Okay, well, we can go back and forth. Yeah. Um, so the first one I have is what person in your particular field, and we'll say painting what is the who do you find most influential in your work what artists do you do you really find, admire well he's not very famous okay he is a professor okay. um Stephen Gardner okay he does a lot of gouache and he does a lot of painting mm -hmm. and I just really admire his work I hope he doesn't listen because I don't want I don't want him to know. That. It's a secret. It's a secret. It's a secret. This is a public but. radio station, Adonis. You might know. Well, Stephen, if you're if you are listening, just forget you heard it. And anyone who knows Stephen, <laughs> shh. So, why do you admire him so him so much? He has such an attention to detail. Mm -hmm. um, his lighting is phenomenal. He does mostly like bar portraits. Mm -hmm. um, which is something I can never do. I can never do landscapes mm. or multiple figures. I think, like, two figures in a painting is the most I could ever do. But he just does it phenomenally. Mm. And I don't know if I could ever do something like that, 
possibly in 50 years. Okay. <laughs> but I have faith see. that if you put your mind to it and you start working at it, yeah, like, I, I believe in you. <laughs> Good answer, Don. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, uh, if you're walking around alone around Savannah and you're daydreaming, is there a theme music that's playing in your head that accompanies you in your life? <laughs> um, <laughs> do you know Annie the Musical? Tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. Song? yeah. Yeah. That's your theme oh, song? The song no. wow. tomorrow. No, how are you just like you? such a pleasant nugget of human? Like, that's Gosh, just Adonis. Like, <laughs> probably. Just making us all feel like salty, dark people. <laughs> no, seriously, I was like, wow. I already knew I was a bitter human, but really, this is fully cemented. Wow. <laughs> team mean, music is Annie at the musical. One of my... Hey, paying off my student loans, <laughs> betting off, betting my bottom dollar. That's yeah, come out tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. As someone with Incredible. student loans, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I I know you're a reader, but my assumption is that everyone in life is a reader. So my question is, um, what is your favorite book, or what is your mm. most like? What book speaks to you the most? I think I know the answer to this, but I want everyone else to know the answer to this. <laughs> well, I think you know it as well. <laughs> but it's The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. It is about a bookstore where every book on the shelf is a different life you could have lived if mm-hmm. you had made a different choice. So it's, I mean, it's definitely something that I think everybody thinks about. Their regrets, their past choices, how different their life would have been. And Matt Haig just writes it phenomenally. So I think it's a book that everyone should read. Wow, you're really selling it. I'm going to read this book. (laughs) (laughs) Adonis, I wanted to ask you, if you were not going to be an artist, what is your second choice career you'd like to do? Someone who works in a museum. Okay. I think I would always just be around art. Yeah. If I wasn't making art, I would be, I don't know, telling people about arts or looking at art, something like that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that too. Well, Adonis, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Yeah. And um, we're excited about checking back in with you to see how the art journey is going. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have, have faith it's going to go well. Tens but. and tens of listeners who are going to be looking Yeah, and we're very invested. <laughs> thank you so much, Adonis. It's been lovely getting to know you. And thank you for being our first interviewee. Yes. Yeah, thanks for having Fantastic. me. Now we'd like to talk to you about some fun, artsy events coming up in the community. Um, Every Wednesday at the store called Superbloom, they have free watercolor supplies so you can paint while you have wine. That is 5 to 8 p.m. every Wednesday. Um, On Friday, July 22nd, there is a film at the Culture Arts Center called Kimmy. That is going to be at 7 p.m. On Saturday the 23rd, there is a reception at Sulphur Studios. They have a group show. It's a collection of works inspired by the coastal region in Georgia. That will be at 5 p.m. And then um, going through all summer, Location Gallery has a show up. It's the artist Jennifer Nolan, and she has beautiful paintings of animals. Uh, And then finally, there's a photography contest open right now by the Friends of the Savannah Coastal Wildlife Refuge. Um, Their entry deadline is August 14th. All photos must be taken on publicly accessible refuges refuge lands and they have a suggested entry fee of ten dollars um you can google friends of the savannah coastal wildlife refuge to get more info on that um and lastly um we just wanted to mention that there are a bunch of book clubs that happen at e shavers um each month we have seven book clubs Mm -hmm. um and the most um the one that's coming up is on Tuesday, the 26th, and it's our it's a mystery book club. Um, it's at 6.15. They're going to be discussing um, Casino Royale by Ian, Flame, oh, Ian cool. Fleming, oh. which is the first in the James Bond novels. That sounds like a great book club. Yeah. And I've been to many of the E. Shaver book clubs, and they're fantastic. So if you've been looking for something to get involved with this, it's uh, very not intimidating. You can feel... Yes. Very good as your Comple- first book club. Completely open to the public. We just ask that you have finished reading the book before you come. There you go. No spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> Thanks, and hope to see you out there. All right. You are listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with a global soul.